Hey there, internet friends. Welcome to another episode of That D Plus Show. Class is in session for the only show from that nerdy site that lets you know what kind of quality to expect right from the name. I'm your host, Trevor Starkey, and each week we dive into a different Disney Plus offering and discuss its history, how it holds up today, and our general impressions. If you like the show, we would love if you like, subscribe, rate, review, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. Joining me once again today, we have Cameron Abbott. How you doing, Cameron? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, no, no more Indiana Jones. We'll probably end up seeing that this weekend uh, and do a That Nerdy Sight show spoiler cast for that. Uh, uh, but uh, since it's obviously not on Disney Plus for another few months, we won't be circling back to it and wrapping up our uh, Indiana Jones month until then, technically. So instead, today we are going to be talking about Secret Invasion, uh, specifically the first couple episodes of Secret Invasion, uh, as it is the new Marvel hotness. Um, obviously, we missed episode one last week because we were wrapping up with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, so this week, uh, both Kim and I sat down and watched episode one, Resurrection, and episode two, Promises, uh, which we'll go ahead and just kind of fold both of these into a singular episode and then as we often do maybe we'll circle back once the six episode season is done and do kind of like a full wrap up um so yeah that's that's kind of the 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 gist of it um uh did you watch both episodes i this did week, watch both Kim? episodes yes okay um and but both of them you watched like this week right mm-hmm. okay like you, you caught up, uh, kind of thing. I like I watched the first episode last week, and I actually also went back and like rewatched it mm-hmm. today, um, just to like refresh my memory on it well, a little bit. There's some stuff that happens in that second episode that really makes you go back and have to like reanalyze how that first episode goes down. Sure. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Uh. Again, why do we pick it? The MCU newness of it. Uh. In the uh, history lesson, this was originally released slash is originally releasing June 21st through July 26th, 2023. Uh, Six episode run. Uh, Episodes so far are running between 55 and 58 minutes. In the MCU TV timeline of things, we had Moon Knight uh, in beginning of uh, 2022 with a run between March and May. Uh, In this slot last year, June to July, we had Miss Marvel. Uh, followed by She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, August through October. Uh, and this is the first show we've had back since, uh, Secret Invasion, following up She-Hulk, uh, obviously running here June through July. Loki Season 2, scheduled for October and November of this year. Uh, Echo, scheduled to drop all at once on November 29th. I remember when they announced that, it was like a big old hubbub of like, what does it mean? It's like, I imagine Disney's just probably trying different like methodologies and trying to figure out what works. Yep. They've tried something for so long and now they're going to try a different way. Like, <clears throat> like this is uh they've also done this. Yeah. So they've, they've done like everything drops all at once for mm-hmm. other series and stuff like that. Um, uh, following that, uh, what if season two is somewhere out there in the TBD land, uh, potentially, uh, end of this year. Uh, Ironheart is slated for TBD 2024, Agatha Coven of Chaos, also TBD 2024, and Daredevil Born Again, TBD 2024. (coughs) Uh, Our director for these two episodes, and I believe the series as a whole, is Ali Salim. Uh, They are TV director uh, uh, on projects including In Treatment, Criminal Minds, Manhunt, and The Calling. Uh, the writers, uh, Kyle Bradstreet is the created for television and also wrote, um, uh, at least one of these episodes. I didn't double check who wrote the second episode here. Um, but, uh, he has previously worked on Borgia, Cooper and Mr. Robot. Um, definitely understand the Mr. Robot vibes that you get in this, yeah, yeah, this show. Definitely, definitely got the Mr. Robot-ness in there. Uh, and then... Uh, yeah, the the uh, writer for both episodes uh, thus far, uh, in addition to Kyle Bradstreet, is Brian Tucker. Uh, and his only other credit was uh, a project called Broken City, uh, which I know nothing about. Uh, so shout out to him. And that, that was from 2013. So shout out to Brian Tucker basically getting a big old Marvel show as his second, like, big writing job. Uh, Uh, And then I threw in here just because uh, is a nice thing to have, and I don't always remember to do it, uh, but Brian Michael Bendis uh, was the uh, kind of head behind the original Secret Invasion storyline in Mm -hmm. the comics. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis, known for Mm -hmm. a whole bunch of comic stuff over the years, including Ultimate Spider-Man, New Avengers, 
the storylines Avengers Disassembled, the Secret War storyline, the House of M storyline, Secret Invasion, Siege, and Age of Ultron. Uh, he was also the co-creator of Riri Williams, um, who uh, will be in the Ironheart uh, series, uh, Miles Morales, of course, and Jessica Jones. Uh, our cast of characters here, we got, of course, Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, uh, which he has been playing since Iron Man in 2008. Uh, other films uh, include Pulp Fiction, Snakes on a Plane, and The Hateful Eight. Ben Mendelsohn returning as Talos, uh, having previously played Talos since Captain Marvel in 2019. Uh, he's also been in the films Animal Kingdom, The Dark Knight Rises, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, Ready Player One, and the 2018 Robin Hood, as well as uh, Cyrano from a couple years ago. A um, few of those I just threw in because they're movies I either saw or liked. Uh, and I didn't like Robin Hood 2018, but Ben Mendelsohn was good in it. He was the Sheriff of Nottingham. Uh, he's one of the bright spots. Uh, Olivia Coleman in here as Sonia Fallsworth, uh, having previously been in projects like Broadchurch, The Favorite, and The Crown. Uh, Amelia Clark as Gaia, of course, from Game of Thrones, as well as Terminator Genesis and Solo, A Star Wars Story. Also Last Christmas. And Last Christmas, yes. That's actually a pretty good movie. Sh sure. I mean, it, it's fine. It was fine. Uh, it was it was a, a movie that gave away its twist in the trailers and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was like kind of a why is that even a twist kind of thing? But whatever. Uh, Kingsley Benadire playing Gravik. Uh, previously been in Peaky Blinders. Speaking of Christmas movies, he's also in the Noel Christmas movie on uh, Disney Plus, which is one of like the launch things. Uh, I remember with Anna Kendrick and Bill Hader. Mm hmm. Uh, and then he was also in the uh, series of High Fidelity. Uh, I threw her in here because uh, it seems like she's probably going to be popping up uh, more, more and more. Uh, Charlene Woodard playing Priscilla, uh, who we get at the end of this episode. And we get her at the beginning of the second episode as well, but, uh, but mostly kind of big reveal at the end of the second episode. Uh, she'd been previously in the film uh, adaptation of Hair back in the 70s. Uh, she was also Tichaba in the iconic Crucible film. Uh, and then in Unbreakable and Glass, she plays uh, Samuel Jackson's mother uh, in in those films. Uh, so fun little reunion between these two. Uh, and then a couple other little miscellaneous ones. Dermot Mulroney uh, playing President Ritson. We haven't gotten a ton of him yet, but presumably he'll be um, playing that throughout the rest of the season. Uh, of course, from a number of projects, um, not the least of which being confused by as, you know, Dylan McDermott and stuff like that. Uh, but he was in My Best Friend's Wedding and he had a fun, memorable stint in the New Girl series. Uh, Christopher McDonald in here as the Fox News-esque Chris Stearns. Uh, of course, Shooter McGavin from Happy Gilmore. Uh, and also he was in Flubber at that time. And those are like always the one, two <laughs> things I think of when I see him. So I was like, hey, it's Shooter McGavin and, and the guy from Flubber. One of those actors that just has like a, a, like a portfolio of characters that if you need somebody to fill that kind of a role, he can fill that role. Um, and he's perfect for it. Although I think they go a little too bottle blonde on his hair, but I think that's probably intentional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, some final little uh, MCU-esque cameos here. Of course, we had Kobe Smolder in the first episode at, uh, returning as Maria Hill uh, <laughs> and departing in the second episode as Maria Hill, uh, which she has been playing since the Avengers in 2012. Uh, and of course, she was Robin in How I Met Your Mother. Uh, Martin Freeman as uh, Skrull Agent Everett Ross, uh, having played Agent Ross since Captain America Civil War back in 2016. Uh, of course, also in The Hobbit and any number of other projects, um, the original UK office, for example. Um, and then uh, Don Cheadle as Rhodey, uh, having played Rhodey since Iron Man 2 in 2010, uh, but also you know Oscar nominated for Hotel Rwanda and a number of other projects that he's worked on. Interesting um, enough, he was also, I forgot the name of the film, he, but he was in a sort of uh, th spy thriller, terrorist thriller movie a few years back that this this movie actually really reminds me a lot of in a lot of ways. Not terribly surprised by that. That definitely seems viable slash possible. Uh, I feel like, I mean, he, like the other thing I think of him from is always Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's especially... Uh, <laughs> 
like front of mind right now because he has the whole like uh, um, Scooby Doo as like a you know I don't have a clue kind of thing, which is also a line that Hobby has in uh, Spider Verse. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, hey, it's an Ocean's Eleven reference in <laughs> in Spider Verse. Um, uh, but yes. Uh, and lastly, a little bit of trivia here before we talk about the episode proper. Uh, the show's title sequence was created with artificial intelligence. This caused a wave of negative feedback with major complaints being that Marvel was too stingy to employ actual artists for the titles. Producers explained that their intention was to create an unnatural, unsettling atmosphere that no natural artistry could have managed. Uh, and they've also had a whole bunch of like statements coming out being like, we didn't actually, you know, take away any jobs from this. Um, it's like, all right, well, that's, oh, a, whole, sure, that's sure. a whole other thing. Uh, and then uh, I threw this, this one in because I saw it basically right before we started recording and thought it was funny. According to Samuel L. Jackson, Marvel had, had issues with fans flying drones overhead during filming in an effort to leak spoilers. So, quote, they shot one down and they followed one back to where the dude was. They found him and yeah, they got him. So <laughs> don't know what that means, but. Definitely probably sounds very menacing coming from Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson's the fucking best. I love Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Uh, so, Cam, uh, yep. what uh, what did you think of the first couple episodes here of Secret Invasion? I'm not going to lie. I came into this really, like, I knew scrolls were going to be involved. I knew that was going to be involved. But also, like, I have been so, like, not overwhelmed or underwhelmed, just whelmed by Marvel products as of late. Um, like, Revisiting Ant Man and our Quantum Media was something of like a letdown, uh, because of just like after that first watch, it like that movie takes a hit. Um, other than that, I also like it's been kind of feeling ambivalent. Like, where is Marvel at this point in time? And getting something like Secret Wars was like a punch in the mouth in the best way possible. It was a this is not a holdover. This is not a yeah, you like you don't have to watch. This is for me must see Marvel. Like this is Marvel at what I feel like is when they're doing their non superhero storytelling at its peak. Um, Samuel Jackson is commanding. Uh, he is. There's a, a a he's one of the characters refers to him as being just a husk of a person, and he comes off that way. Um, he is. He is, this is a man who has given basically everything he can give. At one point in time, he was literally blinked into nothing. Um, and he has been trying to, what I feel like is like, let me let me take a, a note here, put a, a suit around the world, as it were, mm -hmm. um, with Saber. And he's called back down to Earth in a very real way. And the end of the second episode, yeah, has such revelation that immediately like I went back and rewatched the beginning of episode two and I was just like, Oh my gosh, is this what they're going to go with? Is this kind of the plot line, the through line through and getting that giddy and excited about it was something that one, I was not expecting after how exhausted I was yesterday at work. Um, I watched this during my lunch break after I had to give a presentation in the morning. So I was like completely like emotionally fried. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so getting it to just kind of like get like a spark of energy and excitement about the show feels I haven't felt this way about a Marvel product in a long time. And I feel every single person on this show brings it on such a level that I just think it's fantastic. Um, this is the sec like guy's second time since he like doing a Marvel product, right? Writing wise. It's just second time in general. Oh, just in general? Like, yeah, his his previous thing was a other, That's right. other thing from 2013. This it being his second thing, he's knocking it out of the park. Like, this has been so that's, good. Yeah, that's, sorry. That's that's one of the writers, Brian Tucker. Uh, the other one, kind of the, the showrunner, uh, is Kyle Bradstreet, who's the, he'd worked on, like, yeah. Robot, uh, Mr. Robot. That's right. Like that. We mentioned that. Even that, like, he's only, you know, he's like a handful of episodes of Mr. Robot kind of thing. So, this, 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 yes. Like, it seems to be from a creative standpoint, kind of the biggest thing any of the director and writers have really worked on uh, thus far. Yeah. I, I think that the idea of the revelation you get from, from uh, Talos in episode two about, you know, how many scrolls there are on Earth. And just kind of like the freak out that uh, Nick Fury has over it. And it's like, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. He thought there was, what, maybe 100? Yeah. 200? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I'll definitely say it's interesting. Like, I 
I know a little bit about the secret, the original secret invasion storyline, largely based off of like explainer videos and stuff in the, in the lead up to, or following watching that first episode of this one. Um, and it is interesting that they're taking this in a much more winter soldier yes. uh, direction um, of like, okay, it's like, obviously we're not going to have scrolls secretly as a whole bunch of the Avengers and stuff like that. We can't get, you know, we can't get a whole bunch of them back to do this and or, you know, most of them are done with their contracts post endgame anyway. Um, so instead of relying on that, which is a key facet of the um, the the original kind of storyline, the fact that they're going with like the, you know, invasion of the body snatchers kind mm. of vibe and they've been slowly but surely like taking major points of power across the government um be it you know we we see the like like little council with like the secretary general of nato and the prime minister of of the uk um uh and and you know a big you know cable tv magnet in in the fox news-esque character um it's interesting that that's the vibe they're going with in in a like you don't know who you can trust obviously like it kicks off with the revelation that agent Ross is a scroll and we're left with the kind of the question of like, okay, but how long has he been a scroll? What is that? Like, mm-hmm. is the real agent Ross still out there somewhere, still alive somewhere? What's, what's that whole situation like? Well, so my question that came up with that was, okay, so agent Ross, this agent Ross is a scroll, but this agent Ross also is talking to a guy that hasn't been in touch with anybody back at the home office for a, a long time. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't know that Ross was arrested for treason and broken out by Wakanda. True. Yeah. It's, there's also the element of like, I don't know where this happens within the timeline of things. Um, my under, my perception understanding is this is the most recent thing. Um, but I but here's the thing. I'm not basing that on any fact or reality. That's just what I've interpreted it while watching it. Yeah. It like originally like my my questioning comes from originally the Marvels was supposed to be like out now ish. Um uh, or like originally, I think that was like the May release or May like June release or something like that um, uh, before it got bumped to November. So like I think in an original timeline of things, this would have happened there. Obviously, in the trailer for the Marvels, we see Samuel L. Jackson still on uh, on Saber. Uh, and we have that moment where uh, uh, Kamala Khan like sees him and screams and, and so, girls out uh, yeah. in space, in space so suit. so it's like where where does that happen in in conjunction with all of these things and also you know obviously he's probably going to be reunited with captain marvel uh in that which seems like that could have you know an impact on this story and vice versa or whatever um so it's it's right now i think and i think it's by design uh this this series is very much like a Hey, you don't know what you don't know yet. Yeah. Um, uh, for, yeah, for, for like, and uh, rewatching that first episode. Yeah. He says he hasn't like been filing things to the home office, but I don't get the v- vibe that it's been that long. Um, so yeah, it, there, there is a, a whole kind of question given the end of, of Wakana forever. Wait, yeah. What is, what was agent Ross's status of things? Like, is he in the wind? Um, or, you know, was he broken out and people were like, oh, actually, yeah, you weren't, you know, you, you weren't a bad guy. So, you know, we pardoned you or whatever. Anyway, obviously, uh, like there are things like that, that the, I don't think anything's ever going to answer. Um, you might get like a, Hey, so wait, what's the deal in like an interview a year from now or something like that. But, um, uh, but yeah, like things like that, it's, I mean, all this to say I'm, I'm much cooler on this than you are. I think, um, this is not like I went in definitely like, Oh, completely had forgotten. This was a thing until last week when people, you know, yeah. a few people started tweeting about it or I, you know, I got the notification on my phone of like, Hey, secret invasion is out now. I was like, Oh, that's a thing that's happening. Yep. I guess I'll watch it. Um, and I watched like this episode for the sake of this. I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't like there's an interesting enough story there. I just am not really in a mood for it right now, I guess is probably where I'm at. Um, and, or it probably is just touching on way too many like 
themes close to home that I'm like, I would rather have escapism as opposed to you don't know what you can trust. And there's so many for- forms of media out there. And, you know, it's easy to, you know, spread lies and deceit and stuff like that. I'm like, I, I hate that. Like our world is already that. Um, so I don't need to jump in and get that vibe from uh, Marvel escapism as well. Um, okay. That, that's so, interesting. Cause like as somebody who lives that of course. and has lived it for the last, like, eight eight nine years like that is very much just like i'm just like cool i got it conceptually i completely believe it let's move on yeah i mean it's it's the same like i i enjoyed like house of cards when it originally came out and then when it started come like when obviously kept before the kevin spacey shitness of it all um i had, I had already <coughs> i'd already fallen off of it years before that because yeah um i wasn't interested in watching that show in a post or in a Trump era. Um, I was just like, that's not, that's not a fun time anymore. Now that we see what, like the actual corruption in the government, just out there in front of everybody as part of the news cycle. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like the, these cut first couple episodes. I'm like, I don't, I'd rather just be playing other things or, uh, or watching other things. I think that's um, So I'm like, I'll, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm like, I still watch everything in the MCU. I will most likely just kind of like let the rest of the episodes pile up and then like binge it the last week or something like that. Oh, so I'm going to be the one watching it week to week this time and you're going to be the one binging it. At so, the sounds end. like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and also in part, um, uh, it got a lot more like violent than I, than, than I prefer uh, That's with like the torture scenes and stuff in, oh, in yeah, the, the second episode scene, and the like torture cutting, scenes, cutting they, a yeah. finger off. I was like, Nope, I don't, that, I don't want that. That just straight up happens out of nowhere. No, not nowhere. It's, it's, it's I mean, it was very much, it was, it was a, it's happening. She clearly brought in the, the clippers and stuff like that. It's happening. Are they going to show it? And they showed it. And I was like, I didn't need to see it. You could have done it all. Yep. I yeah. forgot. I forgot you get really like that. Actually I, torture scene must've been really hurtful, like really upsetting for you. The, like I didn't like that. The thing that actually pissed me off more was the fact that she makes a big show of putting the thing in the, uh, like in the hook to basically, if somebody tried to open the door, pull the door open, uh, uh, it would prevent it from opening. That hook is just completely gone when they blast the door open, uh, and it just falls back. It's like, that's, they went through all of the trouble to show us that, it would not come back the other way. Like I, I got very annoyed at continu- I, I continuity I, shit on that. Yeah, <laughs> on sorry that. about that. I was watching on my phone. So yeah. it was like, I, I completely missed that. Yeah. Um, also like, yeah, no, um, I get why you didn't like that, that entire butcher shop scene. Um, it's very violent. Uh, it's, I mean, like I, I got past that moment and it like the, the, the flip side is Olivia Coleman is, magnetic anytime she's on the oh screen. My God, so she's I'm, so good. I'm 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 loving like her role in this and I'm excited to see where she goes. Um but I think there's also an element of like I don't I don't have the patience for this one on like when the when the hook of your story is everybody can be somebody that they're not or something like that and it's like oh they any anybody we're seeing can shape shift their face at any time. I don't have the patience to be like okay who's who's real and who's not real at the end like the end of this second episode is like okay i'm my initial reading is that nick fury fell in love with a scroll and uh and and has been married to a scroll for who knows how long um but it's also entirely possible that like oh no she he fell in love and married somebody else and that person has taken over nick fury's wife and is a scroll sleeper agent kind of thing. And I don't like, oh, I'm that's, not, that was your read on it. Okay. I, I'm, I'm like, I, my initial read was Nick Fury married a scroll. Like, cause she's, she like, I'm pretty sure she's one of the scrolls we see at the beginning. She is the scroll who introduces, um, graphic graphic to yeah. Nick Fury. Yeah. So like, like I'm pretty sure that's the angle they're going with it, but it could all be a misdirect. And I don't, be. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the mindset of like, I would rather let the show tell all its mysteries and I will binge them at the end and, and not have that like week to week. Who's, who's real. Who's not all that stuff. Are you ready for my read on that? Sure. He married her and they adopted Gravik. Gravik's Nick Fury's son. 
I mean, which is be... why Nick Fury didn't pull the trigger when he had him when he had a, a beat on him. In yeah, the crowd. I mean that's it, that's certainly possible. Because I that's another thing. I went back after that. I was like, hold up, was she the one? And I went back, re-listened to the voice. I was like, yes. And then I went to episode one, watched uh, uh, watched the end of that to see how does how does he move in that scene? Like, and it's like straight up, he has a beat on him, sees that it's Gravik, and lets Gravik dip away. Gravik turns into Nick Fury. Uh, by the way, spoilers, yeah, shoots Mariah Hill and oh, Maria, Maria, sorry, Maria Hill and then like bounces and I'm just like why did, like, but also a lot of the things he's saying, a lot of his actions, a lot of his mannerisms are Samuel Jackson-esque. He, when he's in the car with Gaia and he says, you know, I could have killed him, but like, that's not how you hurt a man. And it's just like, how come for Gravik, it feels way more personal than it does for the rest of the scrolls who hate Nick Fury for breaking his promise. Yeah. And my in my mind, it's it had like it had like I'll be surprised if it's not, but if it, but if they're going with this, I'm loving the idea that Nick Fury, like it's the added thing of like Nick Fury mentioning like his mom on on the train, like the idea about family and like the this emphasis on a personal side of Nick Fury's life that we've mm-hmm. never really gotten before. And I love the idea that like that Nick Fury raised an incredible super spy who's also a scroll, who's now using everything his father taught him to basically wipe try to wipe out humanity. Yeah. And I'm fucking loving that idea. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see where they go with that. It's all it also like I don't remember the the rules of like shape shifting and all that stuff um, uh, from Captain Marvel. I don't remember like what got established. Obviously, in the first episode, we they show us that they've got people in these fracking pods where they can like not only take the personage of somebody, but they can also like take their memories with the fracking pods. I don't remember if there's like another way to do that. But one of the interesting things that I'm like, okay, well, it's incredibly interesting from a like visual storytelling perspective, but like from a narrative perspective, what the hell does it mean is at the end of episode one, all the people that Nick Fury sees are people he encountered like earlier in the episode. Like the little girl with the ball was out there playing at night. Mm -hmm. The woman in the berets you know, he passes her making out on the on a bench and like she just awkwardly looks at him as he walks by. And then the uh, the the guy was the one he bought a drink in the in the pub. Um, and so it's like, OK, obviously, Gravik is being all of those people is the implication that Gravik was also all of the people as Nick was seeing them the first time around. Like or does he somehow have some weird like mental link and he can exploit and use the images of those people that Nick Fury has seen. Like it's, I don't know what that means and I don't know how it works or, and or I shouldn't is, be, or I, is Nick Fury in a fracking pod right now? So, so we're seeing scroll Nick Fury is, is what you're saying? No. So we're <laughs> seeing, we are seeing, um, cause the fracking pod, when you're inside of it, it, they, when they do the draw out the memories thing, this is in captain Marvel at the beginning when she's in the fracking pod, and then pulling her memories through the fracking pod is interfering with the brainwashing that she got from the what is the high directive or whatever its name is. I don't remember. Um, so, but, so the 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 takeaway that you have would oh, have then is like, oh, potentially Maria Hill didn't really die, and and he's they, been in a they fracking could, pod. They could they could pull that and like the fracking pod. Like I, I, don't I think, think that I, would be the very wrong choice to make. I think it would be the right. Here's the thing. Like, I think it's the wrong choice. That's not my what I'm doing. I'm just saying. Oh, I just had the idea because you bring up the fracking pot. I'm like, well, what if it's part of this? And it's like, okay, we know Maria Hill wasn't a a, a scroll because she doesn't turn scroll after she gets shot. Um, also, shout out to we can't even bring her back as the scroll version of her because Sorn's dead too. Um, man, they do great. Like, I'm really digging it. I know that you're not, but I'm also a, a fan of these, like, sorts of shows, like, on a very big way. Like, I grew up watching a lot of these shows with my... My dad's also really big into these kinds of shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we we both... Like, I grew up watching a lot of this this sort of, like, spy stuff, alias stuff, like... Yeah, I mean, like, I'll, I'll say... I mean, Winter Soldier is one of my favorite films in the MCU. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I... Yeah, I thoroughly enjoy the, like... 
more um, spy thriller nature of that. I just, I, I think it's, I'm not interested in watching that on a week to week thing. And it, I think it, it very much fair. is like, oh, like, give me the spy thriller that I can just consume all in one. So you're setting up a question and then answering it the next, you know, the next moment, as opposed to being like, well, that was an unsatisfying cliffhanger that they're like intentionally like leaving as a cliffhanger. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not, it's, it is very much like a, I'm not, yeah, you know, like I've enjoyed plenty. Of, I think it's largely I'm just not in like a, the headspace for it right Which now. Which is totally fair. Um, and like maybe that is oh, I'm because I would much rather <laughs> you know be playing Final Fantasy 16 or something like you that. You did like just binge all of Final Fantasy yeah, 16. Yeah. So um, uh, so you've got like that's kind of where I'm coming from in this. And I think and, that's fair. And I, it's it is I think just a a storytelling like. It's just not a satisfying storytelling thing for it to be a spy thriller that is everybody has a magical ability that means they can be somebody else and sure. you've never known. And and then so it ends up just leading to like unsatisfying questions like, OK, well, yeah, that Everett Ross was a scroll. Had that scroll been Everett Ross for a long time, it'd be had be like because he also obviously has like Everett Ross's phone and all that. Like he has enough things to have been passing as Everett Ross for a while. Um, and I just don't think this, I don't think we're ever going to get satisfying answers in terms of like, well, how long was that a thing? And what other ramifications, you know, did that thing? Have? I saw like one theory that was, uh, or this might've been like on the kind of funny thing. Um, uh, the, the theory that both uh, Everett Ross and Val are scroll sleeper agents, but didn't know that each other were scroll sleeper agents. Uh, and that led to like their, you know, keeping secrets in their divorce or whatever. It's like, if they do that, I guess it, that'd be an interesting thing that they gross. No, thank you. Set up via Wakanda forever, but it's also a trying to pay off a thing that they set up in Wakanda forever. And it's like, I didn't care about it in Wakanda forever that they had a relationship. Why am I going to care about it when they're not the characters that I've, gotten to know them as well i also kind of don't thing. imagine that they'd be like we get that as her as a sleeper like sleeper scroll uh like pre thunderbolts even yeah like i just don't think that's the case i i think my thought and my theory that this is somebody who slid into uh like contacting a like an awol agent pretending to be raw somebody who who agents trust uh to try to get this info and I think that, like, with all of that is the entire point is, like, somebody could come in and slip into be Ross on these, like, sort of clandestine level things uh, because actual Ross is stuck in Wakanda because he's a fugitive because he's wanted for treat. You know, he was he was uh, convicted for treason. So, yeah. But I mean, like, even like here's here's why that read doesn't work is he asked for an extract and Maria Hill answers <laughs> like Maria Hill is the one answering who would know that Ross is out in the wind theoretically. So it's right. Like, but she, but that's what I'm saying is if Maria, so Maria, he requests an extraction for Maria Hill, right? My thought, my process and my position on that is prior to this scroll inserting himself, we have Ross out on, out in the wind. Does he then contact to try to get brought in by shield secretly with, uh, with Maria Hill's faction um, away from the CIA, which is being directed by his ex-wife. Like we know shield does act outside of the other branches of intelligence and military. I mean, I don't even, like is, is, is Maria Hill. And like in this was Nick Fury, even shield still like shield theoretically well, technically been it's not dismantled for a sorry, long time. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Saber. Yeah. They've been saber. But They've been Saber for a long time. We know he's been up on Saber Station. Yeah. Getting that set up. And then we know that um, Maria Hill is like his to still like in contact in 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 cahoots with him. So but they hadn't been like that's that's their well, whole thing in the beginning of the of episode one is like like she had not been like they, they hadn't talked in a while um, and like he wasn't he was up there doing his own thing. So it's it, like I, I it's just so far. What they've done in the first couple episodes not narratively satisfying to me, and I think it, it's just begging more questions than answers. It's than it's providing, um, and yeah, maybe they'll figure out a way to be like, okay, yeah, here's what was going on with Everett Ross in that opening scene, all that stuff. 
I don't think they will, though. I think it was a, hey, here's a way to like have a little cameo that we can do and show, oh, there is Skrull. Um, and and I mean, the 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 premise, the way they introduced the premise with that Prescott, um, Agent Prescott kind of thing, just kind of laying everything out in the, you know, in the opening voiceover as a presentation ever, Ross. Interesting in theory. Um, I just am not enjoying the execution so far. That's fair. I, for me, I just, I don't read that as Ross was a scroll the entire time. I, I don't either, but it's, oh, okay. it's, it's a, that, it causes enough confusion. It's, it's, I don't know what to read it as. I okay. don't know. It, it's, it's, it's the frustration of being like, okay, how long has Agent Ross been a scroll? Um, like, when did he become a scroll? What's the deal with the real Agent Ross? And I don't think the show is going to give us any answers. On Probably that not. Front. I think unless that's a teaser at the end of the season is yeah. Ross is like Wakanda somehow getting involved. We'll see. Yeah. Um, Wakanda got involved in uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon. So now Captain America. Uh, no, they didn't get involved until Civil War. No, 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 no. In sorry, I miss I mislaid Falcon oh, and Winter Soldier Falcon as Winter, Winter Soldier yes. and Falcon. Yes. Gotcha. My bad. My bad. They show up in, in Falcon and Winter Soldier. No, they don't. Uh, y- yes, sorry. In Falcon Winter Soldier, yes, Wakanda shows up. Sorry. Yeah, so I'm, it's not outside the realm of possibility of Wakanda showing up again here. Yeah, that's fair. Um, uh, any any other big? I mean, like the the thing that was probably the most interesting to me was that idea of like the mind games that Graphic is playing with with Nick Fury. But again, even there, it's like okay, but it's great from like a mind fuckery standpoint, but also how does that work in reality? For me, I and, don't, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting too hung up on that to enjoy the show. Well, maybe, yeah, I'm, I'm letting all of that play out and I'm letting that be like what I, I actually read that more as graphic has been just keeping his eye on Nick Fury. Um, which as soon as he finds out Nick Fury's on like, on like, like earth, earth side, I guess the most best way to put it. Once he finds out Nick Fury's Earth side, does he just n- not let his eyes off of Nick Fury? Um, which is, I, I don't know. Which I, again, I guess, I, like, I my, don't put too much thought into that because I just think it's cool. Yeah, and that's like my question though becomes like, okay, is he like really eyes on? Like he again was all of like was the girl making out on a park bench? Was the little girl playing with a ball? Was the guy at the bar like was he there waiting to be in the path of Nick Fury or? Or did he have agents that saw and were tracking and following Nick Fury so he was able to pull all of those visual yeah. like reference points for him? It, it's 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 a thing of like, oh, this is more inter- th- like this was a really interesting thing. But if you think about it for a few seconds, it just falls apart under itself is is my frustration right now. I mean, that's a lot of spy thrillers, though. Sure. The good ones don't <laughs> like I never said this was a good spy. Thriller. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. I, we don't know yet. I think you're right about like spy thrillers are really amazing in like 90 to 120 minute packages. Um, it's really hard to make a compelling spy story over the course of an entire season of television. Um, it's notoriously difficult. And so we'll see how they land it. I think that it's done a good job setting itself up. I think you disagree a li- quite a bit on that, but we'll see where it ends. Mm hmm. Um, any, uh, I mean, again, uh, Olivia Coleman, ton of fun. Like I love the, oh, yeah. that she has a history with Nick. Uh, oh yeah. Her, let's and, talk about her character for a second. Cause I love her character. Yeah. Um, and she's amazing. I did not realize that she was going to be able to hold like a screen presence with Samuel Jackson, but she more than holds her own. She dominates in certain scenes mm-hmm. and it's awesome. She flat out one point, Nick Fury's just like, yo, no, like I like I helped you. She goes, oh, like you helped blow up one of my offices. Like go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. You blow, you, like you blew up my flat. Uh, your city actually uh, referencing uh, Spider-Man No Way Home blowing up London. Yeah. And even that was scroll Nick Fury. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love her. I love I, I love the introduction in that in the first episode. But then I like really love the like her coming in uh, and just completely owning like the butcher. Oh, yeah, that's such a great scene. And, and again, like as much as I don't like the physical violence of the torture stuff like her performance in it and just her like nonchalant giddiness about getting to like do this part of the job seemingly um was a ton of fun when Um, she gets giddy because he says i like she goes nobody ever talks and then she like flicks the needle of it and she goes 
until their blood starts boiling at 130 degrees Celsius. And that change, which is, I don't know how hot that is in Fahrenheit. It, but 180, 90, something like that, probably. Yeah. If not higher. But so your blood boiling to that point. And so she and she injects him with it. And after one doesn't seem to do it enough, she grabs a second and is ready to go again. It's like, man. Also, shout out to her saying, by the way, where's the escape hatch? Yeah. And he goes, what do you mean? She goes, where's the escape hatch? Yeah. The, the, the fact that she like she knows she's going to need an out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. Um, it was great. I loved it. Continuity issues with the door aside, um, <laughs> uh, like she is a lot of fun, and I'm I'm interested to see where where she goes. Uh, I've been a big fan of her since Broadchurch, so yeah, um, I'm uh, intrigued where they go with the Talos and Gaia stuff. Um, obviously, like being at the opposite ends of this scroll Civil War kind of vibes. Also, Talos revealing that like uh, like. Uh, Gravik's responsible for her mother's death and then she pretends to betray Gravik and what do you mean she pretends to betray Gravik she says oh our bombs are going to be marked with these you can like you can find them but that was all a trap I don't think it was I think they just didn't find the third one no because there's a bunch of bombs that went off outside oh you know what maybe you're right I mean or 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 Gravik was keeping enough of that close to his chest that like the the decoys you know, they they were decoys. She might not have known. I don't, I don't get the feeling she was lying to her dad in that moment. I think like she was trying to help and didn't want to see, you know, two thousand people <laughs> get blown up. Um, well, it'll triple by the time they clear the rubble, according to Rhodes. Sure. Um, so yeah, I I I didn't read that as like a her feeding false information to Taylor's. Maybe she was. Maybe that's another thing they'll like reveal. You know, she, she or maybe, was never really on his side the whole time. Or of. maybe it wasn't her at the meet, meeting. Yeah. Again, I'm going to be very annoyed if it's that kind of shit because that just. Oh, I had to do that's, that's, scrolls are involved. It's going to be that yeah. kind of shenanigans. It I mean, just ex- is. Exactly. Which is why like that's it's just not sad. It's 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 not a satisfying journey getting there because it's like I don't. I can't trust anything any character is saying at any moment on the screen because I don't know if they're a scroll or not. And I don't know if the show is going to like play that up as a reveal that they were a scroll the whole time or something. It's it's just not like I just can't get invested in what's happening in the movie. I I'm so <laughs> glad you didn't read Secret Invasion and Secret War. Oh yeah, no. And- it's I mean like I know enough about that story to know I wouldn't like that story. Yeah, no, you like <laughs> there is yeah. See, that's all Secret Invasion was. Yeah. I know. Like, that's all that was. I know. Um, Although and- Deadpool has an amazing side comic book run uh, with the Scroll Invasion, um, where he he just does his own thing during it, and it's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. I mean, the, the idea that, like, even, like, that it's out of hand even for Talos is an interesting idea. Like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. not a few hundred people. It is a million uh, scrolls are probably somewhere around the world. Like they're him being like, they're all here. Like you knew that wasn't going to go down. Well, my guy. Oh yeah. Um, well, that's the whole, like, don't piss in my ear and tell me it's raining moment that Nick Fury has with like, tell me what I don't know. Yeah. About the, sc- about the planet. Tell me what I don't know about your people. Yeah. It's like the blip happened and you were gone and we didn't know what to do. And all our people were being slaughtered across the galaxy. So I called them all here. Yeah. It's also like, I think another pain point of this, obviously all this got introduced in 2019 via Captain Marvel. But the idea that they're playing with like, oh, but they've been here since 95 or whatever. They like, yeah, like you think that's where they go in uh, in in. Captain Marvel and Mm -hmm. in episode two, I think that's how far back they go. So the fact that like this has all been here for 30 years, just building it's 30 years of history. We, the audience don't have. And so it's, it it does just kind of like, Oh, it could be a fun, like writer thing to be like, Oh, this person was a scroll the whole time, but it's not, I don't, I don't find that satisfying. um, If they, if they, you know, unless they do it in a very, smart way but obviously like probably not though like it, it's the kind of thing like oh it'd be interesting if somehow they revealed and they, obviously they can't do this because the actors passed but like if gary shandling had been not only hydra but it also been a secret scroll the whole time or something like that but obviously they didn't 
have any of that planned out. Like it was an interesting enough reveal for Gary Shandling to be like Hail Hydra after we had seen him grilling oh, Iron yeah. Man in in Iron Man two. two? Yeah. Uh, the, so it it's they're trying to recapture that, but they have this like infinite get out of jail free card of like, well, the scrolls have been here the entirety of the MCU apart from like Captain America one in the forties. So anybody we wanted to play with this could be a secret scroll. It's like, I don't, 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 don't do that. Um, Trevor, I have a feeling they're going to do that. I have a very strong feeling they're going to do that because if they're doing anything off of the scrolls, any scroll storyline in the comics, that's it. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, it, and, and the, the diversion they've shown at least so far from the comics is that it's not the big heroes and stuff. Maybe one or two are and will pop up. But I think there's also just an element in my mind of like, I know the TV show budget they're working with. I know they're not going to get Robert Downey Jr. to pop in and be like, haha, I was a secret scroll, you know, in my Iron Man. Well, we saw that he wasn't a secret scroll from his death. Um, but like though, like, any of the, like the big names from the MCU, I don't think are going to pop up and have secretly been scrolls. So the idea that they're instead going with here are powerful people in the world as secret scrolls who have been biding their time. And like, it also becomes like a, okay, like what was the point of having a scroll UN general if you weren't going to try and like take over <laughs> and do like a secret, like if it like Gravit comes in and all these people are already in position to be ready to take over the world. Yeah, you're right. Thing. You're not wrong. Like what, so, uh, but like he's presenting it as like, this is where we go now from here. And so that's another thing. I'm like, I'm going to be curious if they resolve that, if they explain that, or if they're just like, Oh no, like the, like the, the, woman who's you know the uk prime minister just is really good as the uk prime minister and didn't want the fact that she's not a scroll to keep her from being able to do that or was that woman the uk prime minister and then a scroll came in and body swapped her i don't like my my impression that i've taken from a lot of this is they've gone with the scrolls have not been infiltrating by replacing people but rather have been coming up by their own merits is kind of the, the take that i have on it i mean um, this is graphics compound shows that that's not the case well gravix compound is meant to be an inf like a like a terrorist cell infiltration thing yeah it's designed that way but from what we saw at the very beginning of you you have to take a face and like and you'll have to keep it being the idea of like you have to take and assume a human identity is kind of the idea i think it's a little bit like the um wakanda um war dogs where you send them out into the world and they just like they're just they they quote unquote infiltrate by coming up through the ranks of something. And it's very possible that, you know, Hey, uh, this very wise woman who is now the UK prime minister because she's a really great politician and everything. Well, it turns out she's also happens to be a scroll. I like that a lot more than the invasion of the body snatchers type story angle. Um, I, I do that too. the scrolls that the scrolls do in the comics. Yeah. So I just don't know. The show is not giving me a sense that that's what they're doing yet. Um, I, I am very much more have the vibe of like, oh, they've been like putting themselves in positions of power um, in their scroll grand council kind of thing. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah, maybe, yeah, we'll maybe, see. maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, maybe that's I, how I did appreciate yeah. that there it, like there is Gravik is an interesting enough villain in that there's like he has a code. There's there's an interesting ethos there of like the the woman that doesn't go along with the plan, doesn't vote to make him like the wartime general. You can leave. No harm will come to you. Hopefully that holds. Uh, and, uh, and, well, she you know, definitely he, had safe passage that. leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's the kind of thing of like, Oh, are we going to see, you know, next episode, she mysteriously turns up dead. Um, it's possible. Yeah. That's so uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be curious to see where the story goes. I just don't want to have to, deal with the weight, the week to week weight on this one. I don't think so. Um, any, uh, any final favorite thoughts or moments? Yeah. Um, massive shout out to, I just, I really love the, I love that they're not going half assed with, um, some of like the scroll effects. I like that they are like one, they pulled the trigger on killing, Mar uh, Maria Hill first episode. Um, 
And then they can they they really na- put that nail in the head on that one when they said they show up with like her parent her I guess both her moms um claim her body. Um I I I may have missed an establishing shot. There's the one that Nick talks to. Not one that Nick talks to, but there's another woman of the same age standing next to her. And my my oh. my impression of that was those are Maria Hill's moms. Hmm. Okay. Um I didn't I didn't catch that. I didn't read that. So it's cool. I was also watching on my phone. I might not have read that entirely well. Yeah. It's fine. I was just like, cool, two moms. I also have two moms. I mean, it, it's the thing I think that would be weird there is why is Nick only talking to one of them? Because that's the mom, mom, not the, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It could be that other one's actually her sister. I, and my, I was watching on my phone with the too small of the screen. We'll yeah. see. Um, um, what do you think of the uh, uh, the roadie stuff? Um, both roadie at the like, like. Big dick <laughs> America moment. And then also the like confronting Nick Fury and having to deal with Nick Fury trying to play the brother card. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Rhodey being just like a I like one, it shows where Rhodey has gone since the death of Tony Stark. He's continued to be within the advisory positions to presidents and leaders of the United States as a military uh, type of like he has a military rank, but it looks like he has close the close confidence of the president of the United States. He was selected by the president to go and answer to the supposed crimes of the United States and the Americans against Russians. Um, like that, that entire sense of like, I like to see that's where Rhodey is, but I also like that. It's like Nick Fury went up to space and he didn't come back down for a long time. And the world has changed. And part of that is also, he doesn't have as many friends as he used to. And a lot of his old friends don't like him Mm -hmm. because he's trying to play things off the way they were being like cold war, post cold war, kind of like spy tactics. And it's like, that's not how we do things anymore. We're like, that's not how the world works anymore. Um, And it's interesting to see Rhodey really put his foot down and say, no, like you're not, you don't get carte blanche to just run around and be a super spy. Like you're done. You're fired. Like you can't, like you were, you were there without telling anyone you were there. You were there to stop an attack. Why didn't you tell anybody? Why didn't you tell the home office? Why didn't you like, you do these things solo and now Maria Hill's dead and we had to negotiate getting her body back because they think she's a she was part of the attack. Um, like this entire thing, it's like you have like, where do you think like, why do you think you can just do this? And I like that there's like, yeah, like Nick Fury's challenge is that he is an old man in a changed world. And I'm a, I'm a fan of those stories. And so I love that Rhodey was kind of like the hammer coming down on Nick Fury to just be like, hey, this is how it is now. Now you're about to tell me, hey, Cam, what if Rhodey turns out to be a scroll? Fine. I mean, I, I, no, I mean, I definitely think that. I'll be annoyed if it happens, but. Uh, yeah, no, like, I, I like the idea. It's like, yeah, no, Rhodey doesn't show up. And they're just like, yeah, we, we're on the same page with each other. It's like you have you made choices, Nick, that have made that have consequences. I mean, and I, I like I, that. I, I think. Narratively, it wouldn't make sense for him to be a scroll again, not that the show's necessarily going to care about this, but it would be very weird for scroll Rhodey to be there talking to scroll prime minister of England. Um, oh, in, yeah, you're in that right. hearing scene, you're right. Being like, yeah, he- here's why I don't care about what you, you know, are bringing to the table kind of thing. Also sh- r- quick reminder in Wakanda forever, we find out that America's not being the ones doing sneaky, like, like sending in people stuff anymore. It's France now. <laughs> still one of my favorite twists it's just like they they really tee up that you're expecting them to place the blame on america and then it's like nope france yeah i mean i think france is just the ones that got caught that time fair um, enough uh any um yeah i'm trying to think if there was anything else i mean yeah i think i think i've just i will say it was a standout scene with the two of them together and and touching on the things it's touching on uh, i really enjoyed um uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where Rhodey's story, if he, you know, if he continues to be involved in the, in the story this time around, uh, goes, or if he, I mean, cause he, yeah, he popped up a little bit in Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, if he's just going to kind of continue being like our 
gateway into the government where Don Cheadle shows up for, you know, an episode or two of a show. Cause I'm like iron wars or armor wars is the one he's ultimately going to be like probably the like focal point on, but that's also a couple years away still. I think that's 2025. I think slated for that. So, yeah. um, yeah, no, I'm, I love Don Cheadle. I love Don Cheadle. I've been a big fan of Don Cheadle for many, many years, ever since I saw him in hotel Rwanda. Um, and then as he's just continued to be just like one of the best goddamn people, like, acting on this planet like he's so good um love don Cheadle. oh is a shout out to his um i think they were funny or die captain america captain planet yes uh, uh, sketches yes those are always a ton of fun those are great um his yeah no they're they, like don Cheadle's just a top tier guy we all love don Cheadle. yeah um also shout out to him years ahead of its time in his uh star show where he's a uh, like a uh, like PR agent guy. Yeah, lie to me. Lie to me. Yeah, lie to me is a fantastic show if you haven't watched it. Also, but also because he straight up is just like uh, has a has a, a young trans son in that show. I'm sorry, a trans daughter in that show. Um, and he just he straight up fucking owns it, and it's great. Cool. Um. All right. Uh. Let's dive into our report card. We grade from A plus to F. What do you want to give these first couple episodes, Cam? I mean, listen. I'm still gonna give these like a B. Um, I don't think they're like top tier yet. I just, I was so expecting uh, almost nothing from this show that it giving me something to excite me. And like, are they cheap excitements? I think that's kind of where I'm at. This is a cheap excitement for me, but that's more than enough than kind of the the whelmed, uh, whelmed uh, content that we've been getting from Marvel lately. So that's where I'm at with it. And I know you're a lot cooler on it. So what's your grade? I mean, I'm not, uh, not a ton cooler. Like it's a, it's a C for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I like, I think production wise is very well done. Performances are great. Um, and I'm, I'm ultimately like interested enough to see where it goes. I just enough of the premise in general and just like the conceit of the show. I'm not here for week to week. Um, Fair enough. I, I would much rather just be like, all right, just give me the full six hour secret invasion story that I can just kind of like binge through on a, on a day. So I don't, sit there finding myself thinking about these things that are just like tearing every moment apart. (laughs) Um, uh, just let me, let me turn my brain off, enjoy a thing and then be done with it. Um, for this one. So, um, yeah. Uh, extra credit, other suggestions. If you like this, we have, uh, of course, Captain Marvel. Uh, we have what if, uh, Avengers age of Ultron is thrown in there. I uh, don't know necessarily the pull on that one apart from just, I guess, shield stuff. Uh, Captain America winter soldier. That one's obvious agents of shield uh, is a reference point for this. Uh, the Avengers, Captain America, the first Avenger and Iron Man two. Um, I guess where we got, you know, the introduction of this version of Rhodey. Uh, and then one I will throw in there that is not in the like eight that Disney plus picked, uh, but I will also throw in the Falcon and the winter soldier from a Disney plus perspective, I think that's the closest to, uh, this kind of vibe that we've gotten so far. So, uh, if it works for you, go check that out too. Um, but yeah, anything else you watching on Disney plus Cameron? Or are you uh, pretty much, we're like, we're both in the camp of like, we just played a whole bunch of final fantasy 16. This pretty week. much that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of that D plus show. Thank you, Cam, for joining me to talk about secret invasion. Uh, we'll probably revisit in a month or so. Um, as, uh, as this wraps up, maybe then maybe we'll do, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll do like the next three weeks for episodes three, four, and five of secret invasion. We'll do Spider-Man one, two, and three of the Sam Raimi stuff, uh, that's on Disney plus. And then we'll, we can circle back end of July for a, uh, a recap slash wind down of secret invasion. Once all six episodes are out. Oh, there's only six episodes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we're a third of the way through it already. Nice. Uh, you can follow Cameron at Rev Cabot, two B's, two T's. Anything you can give a shout out to there, Cam? Yeah, um, massive shout out to Trevor and I just getting to have a regular episode of uh, That Nerdy Sight Show this past week. Um, it was not a spoiler cast. Uh, so that was nice. Uh, just getting to talk about video games in a non-cryptic manner um, before like telling people, hey, stop watching. Uh, yeah, it was just fun doing that. We go check it out. We talk about Final Fantasy 16, our first impressions of it our times playing through Diablo four and then a little bit of elemental, uh, from kind of Trevor's review of the film. So, yep. Uh, you follow me at Trevor J Starkey. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I'll also go ahead and shout out our let's plays, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays for another couple weeks. Still, uh, are my tears of the kingdom, 
uh, Let's Plays. This week was all about uh, hunting down the Yiga clan out in the depths of the game. Um, so stay t- or so go check those out, youtube.com slash that nerdy site. And you can also see uh, Cameron's time with Jedi Fallen Order as that winds down in the final couple episodes here uh, that have been going up on Wednesdays. Uh, so yeah, go check out all that stuff, youtube.com slash that nerdy site. Uh, you follow all of us over at that nerdy site or go to that nerdy site.com for all the latest from us. Once again, if you liked what you heard, please like, rate, review, subscribe, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. Thank you for joining us. As always, stay nerdy and be good to each other. Class dismissed. <laughs>